I am not writing a novel. Okay, I hear you ask, why is that a big deal? Well, let me explain. Hello, Cinnamon Bun. So, I have spent 10 years of my life working on novels. Uh, three novels, to be specific, only one of which I have finished and published. So back in 2020, I was working on my third novel when I realised that I was so depressed, <laughs> that I was barely functioning, and that now maybe wasn't the best time to be working on a big project like that, so I put it aside. I quit. Again. And thus began my creative identity crisis, because there I was, having built, you know, my entire YouTube channel, my entire business, my entire livelihood around the craft of writing fiction, and I realised that I didn't know if I ever wanted to write a novel again. And what I didn't expect was that that creative identity crisis ended up being the best thing that's ever happened to my creativity. Teen Rachel says, I want acceptance and I want connections and I want a Nintendo DS. Also, I did definitely find a short story I wrote for a class, which was the crucifixion of Christ from the point of view of a child. And um, Teen Rachel says, Jesus was not white. In my teens, my reputation was as the weird art girl. I was constantly creating. I was drawing, I was doodling, I was painting, I was writing little stories, writing poems, but I also got in trouble a lot and I felt like I was never doing, even though people were often like impressed with my work, I felt like I was never doing the kind of work, the right kind of creativity that all the adults expected of me. I got in trouble for doodling constantly in class um, I rarely finished work um, unless it was something super interesting and then I would get obsessed and neglect all my other work. Um, I found it really difficult to finish things, I procrastinated constantly, I left everything to the last minute. I was always late, I was always behind and all I heard constantly was that I had so much potential, that I was brilliant but lazy and stubborn and that I would never get anywhere if I didn't learn to apply myself. I had too many interests, I was too scattered. I had to focus down, did I want to be an artist or a writer? Pick your subjects, pick your courses, pick your art school or your university, pick your profession, narrow down, focus down, just choose something to do for the rest of your life. Focus, Rachel, focus. And no one ever told me that I was allowed to do more than one thing or that I was allowed to change my mind down the line. I was allowed to try stuff and see. So I did my best to choose and I chose art. I wanted to be a graphic novelist when I grew up. I wanted to be a comic artist. And so I applied to art schools and universities. Now in hindsight, I probably should have applied for design and illustration courses in art because that was what my entire portfolio was. It was all like comic art, but I didn't. I applied for fine art because I wanted to study anatomy and I thought that that would let me do that. And so to protect my ego, I tell myself that that's why I didn't get in. I chose art and it didn't choose me. I didn't get into the art school that I wanted to go to. And the one that I did get into would have meant I had to still live at home while I studied. And I knew that I didn't want to do that, but I did get into University of Glasgow and going to university instead would let me strike out on my own, move out, have my independence, and so that's what I did. So in September of 2009, 
in my first semester of university, I got this message from this kind of school friend, friend of me, asking, hey, have you ever heard of this thing called National Novel Writing Month? I'm gonna try it, do you wanna do it with me? And I thought, hey, it's already three days into November, but you know, I've just moved out for the first time in my life and uh, I'm in my first semester of university. Write 50,000 words of a novel in a month? Yeah, sure, it's not like I've got anything else going on. And I won. I wrote 50,000 words. I <laughs> became completely consumed. I pulled all-nighters. I ignored my coursework um, and I had a great time. Um, I took this old stub of a story that I had uh, started when I was much younger and I started injecting it with all of my current obsessions and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote more than I'd ever written in my life. And I honestly never felt more alive, never felt more like fizzing with ideas and more sure that I was working on something, that I was creating something that meant something, at least to me. It was pure creative electricity and inspiration and I was 18 years old and I had no knowledge about structure or storytelling or like skill to like back any of it up. It was a completely dumb, passionate, awful, glorious mess. And so over the next four years, over the course of my degree in philosophy, I kept writing, I revised it, I turned it into a novel. Thankfully, I found this course uh, by Holly Lyle called How to Revise Your Novel, and that gave me some semblance of structure um, and some kind of system to work through to actually revise it and turn it from a mess of disconnected scenes into something approaching an actual story. And four years is a long time to work on one creative project. And for the most part, it was tedious. Like I got these brief glimmers of excitement or passion, you know, like I'd had at the beginning. But for the most part, it was like pulling teeth. I dragged myself through that for four years, telling myself that the pot of gold at the end of it would make it all worth it. And after I graduated from university, I was so, so excited to finally have the time and space to finish it. And that's what I did over that following summer. And when I did eventually finish it and publish it, yes, I was proud of myself and I was happy with myself, but I was also incredibly spent. I just felt empty, creatively burned out, completely sick to death of the whole thing. I don't know if you've ever tried to recount and summarize six years of life and creative work, but it's it's tough. So I'm gonna go through this year by year and try and keep it brief. So in 2014, I was a full-time barista at a place called Avenue Coffee, and I was in a major depressive episode. So I started writing a novel called North of the End, which was pretty depressing. <laughs> it was a post-apocalyptic fantasy, uh, basically about depression. And the first draft of that was completely exploratory. No plan, no structure, just writing. Um, and it was tough. <laughs> okay, so in 2015 I was still full-time barista and just working on my writing in my free time. And I finished the first draft of North of the End. Absolutely hated it. <laughs> Set about trying to overhaul it um, and give it some semblance of structure. And I actually started making YouTube videos. Um, it was my first in 2015. And I initially started it as a way to potentially market my writing. But as I experimented and did more of it, I found that I just liked making videos. 2016, the chaos begins. So in terms of paying my bills, um, burning out on hospitality, had been having uh, panic attacks and really bad anxiety uh, while working. So I was looking for a way to 
shift away from that, but I didn't really have anything at the time. I tried to switch uh, from full-time to part-time at that job um, because I'd done my calculations and was like, okay, I know that I can get by on three days a week instead of five days a week. Um, and it was a zero hour contract, so I just stopped getting hours altogether. Um, I was doing weeks and weeks of three hours a week, which is not enough to pay your bills. Um, so over the course of 2016, I um, started bringing in other kind of part-time work. I worked in another cafe for the summer. Um, I also ended up doing this remote marketing internship, which was chaos. But basically I was like cobbling together an income with several different part-time jobs, which often clashed with each other and doing shifts and it was a mess. And I was skint and stressed the entire time. When it came to North of the End, the novel, I was overhauling the structure for draft two and I was learning a lot in the process. And so um, I started making videos about the writing craft things that I was learning from that process. And that's where um, I really started to gain some traction with YouTube. People started responding to these like writing craft videos that I was doing. 2017, I applied for and got funding to write for a period of six months, I think, from Creative Scotland to just be able to get rid of some of my part-time jobs and just focus on writing and finishing North at the End. And I got it. So from, I was funded to write from the period of March to November 2017 at a very low rate. Like I had only ever been on barista wages before, which is basically minimum wage um, for my entire life. So I think I, I bumped it up to like living wage, which was a couple of pounds more an hour, but that was it. Still, it was a huge win, obviously, to get this kind of validation and funding to write basically full time. Unfortunately, I was so stressed about that being like a finite period and I was in debt because of getting my hours cut from my previous job and the months and months of that. Um, so in and around that funded period, I was still doing a bunch of like freelance barista-ing, um, some social media for the coffee shops that I was working for and stuff. So still this big mishmash. Um, I was working for Deer Green, I worked at Meadow Road Coffee. I was still sometimes doing freelance stuff uh, Avenue um, and I was doing social media as well. So lots of stuff. <laughs> but I had this period where I was funded to write. And in 2017, I also discovered the plot embryo, which was an absolute game changer. And I started using that structure to overhaul North of the End for draft number three. To be honest, it was really hard because I felt so privileged and so lucky to have gotten, you know, this period of time to write. And I really desperately wanted to finish North of the End, but by that point, it was kind of like pulling teeth and I wasn't depressed anymore. I was stressed and I was anxious, but I wasn't depressed. And I just felt like I was forcing myself to work on something that I didn't really want to be working on. I didn't want to work on it. I just wanted it to be finished. And I actually kind of overworked myself, I think, because I was so, I felt like if I didn't, then it was like I was being ungrateful or that I was wasting the time and money I'd been given. Um, and so I actually pushed myself kind of too hard, but it also put this massive amount of pressure on it where I was like, oh God, now people are expecting this of me. I really need to finish this. And I'm trying so, so hard and it feels like it's going an absolute snail's pace and I don't know if I'm ever gonna manage this. And then when it came to YouTube um, in 2017, because I discovered the plot embryo and was learning all this new stuff um, about structure, I started making videos about that. So I, I made my first video on the plot embryo um, and was continuing to just focus all of that on writing craft. 2018. So the funding that I had like budgeted for um, technically ended in November of 2017, but I stretched it beyond its limit. I like pared down and lived off nothing because I hadn't finished North of the End yet and I just really didn't want to go back to the the types of hospitality jobs that were stressing me the fuck out and making me super anxious. So I was job hunting and stuff that year. Um, I ended up again in this situation of cobbling together several different part-time jobs to have an income. So over that year, I was doing social media for a coffee roaster. I was basically a freelance barista now, so I didn't like take on a contract. Basically, I had all these contacts in the coffee industry and I was just like, hey, if you need a barista, I'm here. Um, I'll just invoice you as a freelancer. 
um, and I'll just pick up shifts whenever. So I was doing that for several different places, which was chaos. But on YouTube, people were really excited about this plot embryo stuff that I was talking about and had started to come to me for like advice about it. So I started doing like one-to-one -one coaching sessions, helping people get unstuck with their stories. Um, in August of 2018, I finally quit kind of the freelance uh, barista-ing and launched my Patreon. And between that and doing like a big sale on my one-to-one -one coaching sessions, where I sold like a bunch of them, I managed to go for the first time, full time, me. So I was juggling all these different things, trying to pay the bills in many different ways. And in the background was still just struggling through with North at the End. I think I'd finished draft three maybe by then and I was trying to do the beta. And finally, the last year of this particular era, 2019. So 2019, I was working for myself, full time, basically between uh, Patreon and my one-to-one -one coaching sessions that was paying the bills. Um, I way over committed myself with Patreon. I took on way too much work and promised all these videos and stuff that once I started doing it for a few months, I realized this is not sustainable. And so eventually I paired that back. And with the one-to-one -one coaching stuff, I was starting to realize that I was really just taking everyone through the same system of plot embryo stuff and that maybe doing this one-to-one -one and explaining the same things to people over and over again wasn't the best way to structure my business. So in 2019 I realized that it was time to take that system that I was taking people through individually and just giving them little pieces of the puzzle and turn it into a proper course on the plot embryo and everything I'd learned about it from the last several years of working with it for myself and helping other people with it. And that became the Story Magic Academy. And over the course of 2019, I created it from scratch and I launched it for the first time. And that was a massive undertaking in terms of work and creativity and energy and didn't really leave very much at all for working on North of the End or on videos. So with North of the End, with writing, basically, went months without touching it. And this was tricky when it came to YouTube because thus far I'd only basically made these like writing craft videos of like here's how to do X when it comes to writing and it felt like everything I'd learned thus far was going into the Story Magic Academy and therefore like was taken up and couldn't be used for a video. And then on the other hand, like I wasn't getting the time and energy to work on my own writing. And so I wasn't really learning anything new um, that I could then share. So, but you know, this was my life and now my business and my livelihood. So I didn't feel like I could stop making videos indefinitely. I didn't want to stop making videos indefinitely. So um, what I ended up trying was making my first vlog because I thought, okay, well, that's a type of video that I can experiment with, see if I like doing it. And it doesn't require scripting and it doesn't require this like how to like craft knowledge that I felt like I was kind of like, that the well had kind of run dry there for a little bit. And so that's why I made my first vlog. And then the last thing that you need to know about 2019 is that this is when my relationship with my then partner of five years was starting to break down. And basically I was falling apart at the seams and felt like I needed to hide that from most of the people around me and basically everyone online. So 2020 was an era all by itself, wasn't it? <laughs> So my big breakup started at the very end of December 2019 and basically lasted all through January of 2020 where I was, you know, trying to organise a place to live and organising moving out and just the all of the logistics of breaking up with someone that you live with. The, the breakup itself, I guess, kind of ended at the start of February 2020, where I moved into this flat that you're seeing right now. So February of 2020, I moved into this new place. The, the breakup was complete, absolutely leveled me. And um, I did a vlog of the moving process. And it was actually the first vlog in which I'd ever kind of shared real difficult negative emotions that I was going through. And that was really nerve wracking. 
um, but I ended up being really happy with how it came out. It felt kind of cathartic to do that and people responded to it really well and really resonated with it, I guess. So February of 2020 was also the time that I decided to quit North of the End after working on it for, I think, five years, maybe six years. Ugh. It was a wrench. It was really tough to make that decision and to basically call myself on sunk cost fallacy and just be like, I've put years of work into this, but I cannot face working on this right now um, and maybe ever again. So I'm gonna retire this project. I'm gonna free myself from it and I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on something else. It was a really hard decision and I had a lot of guilt around it. I felt like I was letting people down who'd been like, you know, following me along the way and had been waiting for this book for a long time. And I was like, oh God, I'm just, I must be a terrible writer if I just, if I've spent so many years on this book and I still can't finish it and all of this stuff, but it was a necessity at that point. You know, I was really not doing well personally, really struggling. And um, I just knew that I, I didn't have it in me to keep working on it, so I quit. And I had chained myself to that project for so long and not let myself work on another story or another novel um, in so long that as soon as I let it go, the space was immediately filled in my brain with like, okay, here's the idea for the next thing. It's gonna be much more fun, much more light, um, much more exciting, much more tuned into what you're interested in now. And I started working on that. It's an urban fantasy project, um, another novel, the working title of which was Which City? So from about February to August of 2020, I was doing my thing, um, chipping away at Which City when I could, um, making a bunch of videos, making a bunch of vlogs. By that point, I still couldn't really face um, the idea of making writing craft videos. So I thought, okay, well, I'm working on a new project so I can make vlogs about the process of that. And that means I'm still creating writing related content, but it's hopefully easier for me. And in the background, still just not coping very well at all with my heartbreak. I'm still just really having a difficult time. And in August, I eventually hit a kind of breaking point with that I had been, I had gotten some catharsis out of the vlogs that I'd made already. And so I thought, okay, I'm gonna try and make a kind of retroactive vlog about my breakup and processing it. Maybe it's gonna be too personal. Maybe it's gonna be just for me, but I have to do something to help me make sense of this. And that project became The Modern Leper, which was my first short film. And it was a very obsessive creation process. Um, it was very scary. I was really going inward to face pain in a creative process in a way that I'd never done before and that seemed absolutely terrifying. And I wasn't sure if it was gonna pay off or be cathartic or if I was gonna get anything out of it or if I was just doubling down on my heartbreak. Uh, but I came through it and I made what felt like the best thing I'd ever made. I was like, holy shit, this is art. <laughs> so from August to November of 2020, I was still uh, kind of chipping away at Witch City here and there. I was waiting for the music rights for The Modern Leper to find out if I could release it or not um, and doing more editing and stuff on that. Um, and I also started uh, playing and running tabletop games, which were another like creative outlet for me. Uh, things like D&D, uh, Monster of the Week, Still Fleet. Uh, and then in November of 2020, I finally had everything in place to release The Modern Leper, and I did. And I also tried to do NaNoWriMo for Witch City. So I was gonna try again to write 50,000 words of the first draft in a month. And about halfway through that month, I made uh, this vlog, uh, this like winter vlog, um, which documented the process of me trying to get my shit together, struggling, and eventually realizing that I was actually depressed, that I was not coping with everyday life. I was not functioning very well. I wasn't really able to uh, take care of my basic needs most of the time. And by that point, you know, I'd 
processed a lot of my breakup stuff. I'd kind of moved on from that. Um, it really felt like I'd kind of like drawn a line under that uh, with the Modern Leper, um, but by this point it was like the weight of the pandemic and lockdown and um, just the isolation uh, of working from home, living alone and being single was not a good combination for me. Um, and so once I realised that I just how bad things had gotten, I was like, okay, well, I can't be putting that much of my energy into this novel when I need to take care of the basics. I need to take care of myself first. So I put Witch City aside and I got to about, I think, 13,000 words uh, in that NaNoWriMo total and um, that's where I stopped working on Witch City. Twenty twenty one. This light is insane. Um, the the sun is just like absolutely glaring through this cloud. But I've done this same angle for all of these little story se segments so far, and I don't want to change that now. So you're just gonna have to deal with it. So, twenty twenty one. First half of the year. Very rough for me, mentally, physically, emotionally. Just. Just life wise. Um, it was a really tough time in a lot of ways. So. I took a bunch of time off of work to just focus on getting a better handle on my basic needs and taking care of those. I uh, did a lot of therapy, but creatively I also was still um, working on RPGs, so creating ventures to run for my friends. I created the Maybury Mall adventure, which was like a Gremlins-esque thing set at Christmas, and I created Space Hamster, which I did a vlog about, which you can see, and I was still playing RPGs. Um, I was still playing Still Fleet fairly regularly and stuff as well. So that was happening. Um, otherwise, basically the only thing I was working on creatively was these narrative vlogs, or still vlogs, but they'd taken more of like a narrative bent after The Modern Leper. And they were still really valuable <laughs> uh, when I was going through a lot of these tough times. But other than that, basically everything, all of my energy was going into just surviving and taking care of myself or running um, my business, so like the stuff that I needed to do to pay the bills. Then in the second half of 2021, um, with with an enrollment week for the academy kind of out of the way, I could then start to think about creativity again. Lockdown was starting to ease finally after, after a very tough winter and spring and um, so life was expanding a little bit and at the end of July in 2021 I also met my boyfriend, partner, nightmare, <laughs> Heat. Um, so that was like a massive thing, you know, a big shift in my life and lovely and disruptive and you know just a whole a whole thing to get my head around. And so I really was just experimenting. This was the first time in my life where I hadn't been either actively working on a novel or telling myself that I was gonna get back to working on the novel. This was the first time that I was like novelless and um, it was incredibly freeing and also terrifying and I really struggled with how that affected my identity as a creative because I'd called myself a novelist and a writer for so long and I was like well maybe I don't want to do this anymore and who am I then? <laughs> And so 2021 was a year where I experimented with lots of different things. And at the time I was really stressed about like how many different things that I was trying and then not finishing, or I would have an idea for something and then it would be too overwhelming and so I just wouldn't do it. But I think looking back, it's so obvious that I needed a period of experimentation after letting myself, like cutting, cutting the cord with novels for the first time in like a decade, obviously, it took me a while to kind of figure out what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go. And I also kind of like leaned into the creative identity crisis in a more like conscious way. For the first thing I started, I decided to do Julia Cameron's The Artist's Way, which is a book that's kind of also a course. So it's like exercises and activities. And I started doing a vlog of that. Um, and I was so, so excited about that vlog. It was really chunky. It was like a, over a week, maybe two weeks 
of footage and um, there were some really good stuff and realizations I had in there and then I lost most of the footage for it because of a hard drive corruption which was really disheartening and set me back um, quite a bit with videos but I still got an incredible amount out of that experience or it was things that I'd been thinking about uh, before that kind of finally clarified and crystallized as these epiphanies. I also booked some like mentoring, like chat sessions uh, with someone that I, whose work I really like, so that I would have a space to talk about my creative identity crisis and like where to go from here and what to work on next and how to decide between all of these different ideas that I had. Um, and so I had three of those sessions like spaced out over several months and that was also super helpful to be able to bounce stuff off someone else. So I was actively kind of exploring and excavating the crisis itself and being like, where do I go from here? Who am I? What am I doing? What do I want to do? All of that. As that was happening, I was also experimenting with different mediums. Um, I was working on Project Tenera, that's when this began, um, which I think kind of began in earnest in July of 2020, and I've been working on it, kind of chipping away at it, basically every month ever since then, and it's still going, and it's almost done, maybe? I came up with the Constellation system for the first time, which is like an organizational system that I use that's been incredibly helpful and inspiring for my entire life. Obviously that's not exactly expressive art, it's like craft <laughs> or like a system or something, but that was incredibly valuable and that was still a creative act to come up with that. And for the first time in my life I started doing bullet journal videos regularly and then monthly. Like I actually, I switched from planning by the calendar month to doing it by my cycle. So doing it at the same phase of my cycle when I had the energy for it, making that shift meant that I actually was always setting up my month, like instead of like doing it halfway through or skipping or whatever, because I was timing it to when I had the energy for it. And it also meant that like I hit a rhythm and was able to just like start knocking those out as kind of chill videos that I could make basically about once a month. That's been a really nice like consistent creative output that I've been doing. It's not super like deep and emotional and hard hitting like uh, some of my narrative or angst vlogs or something like The Modern Leper. Um, it tends to just be like chill, I'm setting up my journal, I'm just chatting about what's been going on. But there's a place for that kind of creativity too. You know, sometimes just making something that helps someone else relax for a bit and is nice and chill is okay also. All right, how about now? <sighs> Was I meant to wash my hair last night? so that it would be done for filming today? Yes. Did I do that? No. So, this is what we're doing. So, that's the story. That's my story. Um, having gone through all of that, where does that leave me? Where am I now? How do I feel about my identity as a creative now? Um, and what does that mean? So one of the biggest things that has affected this whole journey <laughs> for lack of a better term, and like all of the revelations that I've had about uh, what I want to do creatively and all of that. A lot of it has come from, from the realisation that I probably have ADHD. Realising something like that <laughs> does have a way of um, making you look back on your entire life and look for like, oh that's how it might have been affecting things in the past that I didn't realise. and. Um, I think that's been a really big part of it, is just realising that like I might not be built for certain types of projects because of that, you know, like my interests and my motivations change really quickly and that doesn't make me a bad person and it doesn't make me less of a creative, it just means that like I might not be able to maintain motivation and drive and executive function to actually complete certain types of really long form projects. I guess the other part of that being a lot of the experiences and projects that I've done that aren't novels have shown me that I can still create what I feel like is really meaningful work that way um, without embarking on these massive several years projects. And this is something that I want to get into in more depth in another video but like just that idea of like thinking of creativity or creative practice as a loop, as a cycle. You know, you have an idea, you start something, you muddle through the, the messy middle, hopefully 
finish it and then you get to release it uh, or like complete it or end that process and I think that's been one of the massive benefits of doing YouTube uh, is that yes it might have certain downsides as all creative mediums do but it has shown me what it feels like to complete that loop regularly in a way that writing never really has um, you know because with something like a novel depending on how fast you can write and obviously people do complete novels much more quickly <laughs> uh, than I do or have but um, for me working on a novel thus far in my life at least has been only getting to close one loop every few years and I realized from doing YouTube that that's not enough for me because closing loops is motivating <laughs> getting to finish something and put it out there and get feedback and have it connect with people is motivating and it encourages me to think of my works as just like you know little pieces of the puzzle little episodes in my larger body of work which will always be evolving because just like people you know creative output and creative practice doesn't stay the same whereas with novels because for me at least there are so much more long term and I do feel like I have to spend several years on them I'm much more in danger of like thinking of a novel as like this magnum opus that needs to be like representative of everyone that I've been so far and everyone that I ever will be for the rest of my life and in reality of course that's not the case and I think this is it as well is that like I change as a person so much in a few years maybe, maybe that'll become less so as I get older, I don't know. But like, I would start a novel at one phase in my life and still be working on it years later when I'm a completely different person and what I'm interested in has changed and what I'm struggling with has changed and my perspective has changed. And it's really hard to complete a work that feels like it represents a person that you haven't been for a long time because the way that I think about creativity is that yes you're always going to outgrow your previous works that's what it is to be human and hopefully you are growing as a person so that's going to happen I think like it's it's natural to look back at your past works and be like oh my god I can't who is that person <laughs> that made that um, and to feel like you've moved past it I think that's normal but like my yardstick was always like at least of the point of finishing and the point of release I would like to feel like I don't have that feeling. You know, I'd like to be content with it, relatively content with it as much as I can be when I finish it. And then, you know, after that point, I'm sure my feelings will change. But again, because novels are so long form, I felt like I was constantly chasing that. So like I was changing as a person faster than I could, faster than I could update the work to reflect that because of the size of it. So where does that leave me? I feel a lot happier and more secure in myself and thinking of myself as a creative, um, a multidisciplinary creative, a storyteller. I do still think of myself as a writer and for a while I wasn't even sure about that but with some things that I've been working on that has kind of come back but I don't really think of myself specifically as a novelist anymore. But I know that I'm always going to want to tell stories. This is the thing, is that like, I adore stories. I just don't think that novels are like the one true medium for storytelling, for me at least. And I don't want to hold myself to that standard anymore. I want to tell stories and make things that hit truth. And I think for a long time, my kind of like guiding light in terms of like, what do I want to put into a story? What do I want to explore? was always like, what seems the most fun? Like what brings me joy? And that seems to make sense, right? Especially for like genre fiction, you're like, okay, well, if I get to explore this imaginative world, like what world do I want to explore? What seems the most fun? And I think that only took me so far. I think that needs to be balanced with something else. And I think that that something else is, okay, follow what feels fun or what lets me hit truth. Like when something just resonates, in your chest and you're like oh my god fuck <laughs> like that is what makes work meaningful as well as pleasurable and I wasn't really following that when it came to novels um, and I think that's why I kept struggling to connect with the meaning of what story I was trying to tell and I think for now I've also realized that like there are if that's my goal right is to hit truth as much as possible there are other mediums that help me do that better um, that I personally find easier 
are more direct to do that. So yeah, um, I think of myself as a creative and a storyteller, um, someone who just makes things. <laughs> And I do also want to talk a little bit about what that means for my creative practice, for my YouTube channel, and for my business. In terms of practice, I think that means that I am going to let myself, or have been letting myself, follow the ideas for projects and the projects and the mediums that feel the most interesting and rewarding to me, uh, kind of regardless of what they are. And in terms of my channel, it means that I'm probably not going to be talking a lot about fiction writing for a while, um, if at all, again. Which you can probably tell if you've been following my channel for a while, right? I haven't been doing that for a while. This is me kind of finally addressing that shift that a lot of people have probably already seen. My focus is no longer just fiction. I still am always going to be obsessed with storytelling, but it's going to be across mediums and genres. Uh, fiction, non-fiction, words, images, film, like stories are not an interest for me, they are a religion. <laughs> so that's not going to change. But I want to talk more broadly about creativity generally. Um, I want to share stories and tools and rituals and what I'm learning along the way in terms of storytelling and living a creative life and like living a magical life and a life that feels honest and good most of the time. And this is one of the reasons that I struggled with this shift that was happening for so long as well, was like, you know, my, my livelihood is the Story Magic Academy. It does teach uh, fiction storytelling. It's my deep <laughs> belief that all of the stuff I learned about story structure from using it for fiction still applies to non-fiction storytelling and it's only because I learned all of that stuff and I you know know the plot embryo inside out that I'm able to apply it to non-fiction um, things like vlogs. However, the Story Magic Academy course is designed to help people specifically take them through a process to design fiction stories or at least to learn the plot embryo the same way that I learned it which is through fiction stories and that's not going to be changing anytime soon and I struggled a lot with this idea of like should I still be teaching something that I've kind of moved away from at least for the moment because I worried again about how that would be perceived and stuff but I think where I've come to with that is well that knowledge and that system that I learned and got results with doesn't just disappear into thin air because I'm reevaluating where I want to use my creativity. And it also, I, as I know from my students, it also still helps people a lot. <laughs> you know, I may have moved away from that for the moment, but there's still a lot of people that do want to write fiction. And, you know, a lot of students who have said this was a game changer for me in terms of helping me get closer to that. And so I don't really think it would be fair to stop offering that just because it doesn't apply as clearly and as literally to my creative practice in the same way that it used to. So that's not going to change. But in the long term, I am going to be thinking about like the things I want to make creatively as expressive art just for myself as a creative practice and then also like the things I want to make uh, to add to my business you know offerings that I want to um, to sell or give to other people are going to be more broad than fiction writing from now on and are going to reflect that kind of like oh, this is my focus is storytelling creativity magic how do we meld all those things into some kind of satisfying human life and so you may well see a shift in where that goes with the business in terms of like offering tools and strategies and stuff that are a bit more broad in that way. I just think that the way that we, so many of the ideas that we have culturally about what is and what isn't allowed when it comes to creativity are so unhelpful. The idea that kids need to narrow down their focus so early to decide like what are you going to do for a living? What skill are you going to hone for the rest of your life and make that your entire personality? I think that's unhelpful and it's obviously designed to to prepare you for being a worker under capitalism <laughs> in which you are this one specialised cog in a machine to use the most cliche metaphor but that's often how businesses work right they're these like machines for selling things and creating output and making money and uh, so we're encouraged to specialize ourselves to be perfect cogs 
and that's not the way to live a happy or balanced human life, obviously. And I think that also means that so many people think that they can't be creative if it wasn't like an immediate interest when they were a kid, you know, if they weren't like the art kid or whatever like I was. It's like, oh well, if you can't make money from it then you're not allowed to do it at all, which I think is so fucked up <laughs> because I think that having a creative outlet is a basic human need and I think that spans such a broader spectrum of activities than we typically think of as creative, not just expressive art. And I think that contributes to this idea that if you are like an artist or someone that wants to monetize their creativity or even make it your livelihood that you have to or you should have one true medium and if you don't, then there's something wrong with you. And it's just not true, is it? It's not true. Yes, it might be better to market yourself, to, to narrow yourself down to this one tiny niche, but, but if you want to bend your entire creative practice around the idea of marketing yourself, then you're gonna be unhappy. Okay, and the final question. Will I ever write a novel again? And the honest answer is, I don't know. I'm not working on one right now. I am working on things, I'm not gonna tell you what they are, but I don't know if I'm ever gonna write a novel again. Um, me and novels broke up. We were in an unhealthy relationship for quite a long time and um, we're never gonna be a couple again. That's not gonna happen. Maybe we'll be friends again someday. I don't know, never say never, but if we were, it would have to be a different relationship so yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna follow electricity where it takes me. I'm gonna follow the stories that I, that feel important to tell instead of what I feel like I should be doing. And that means maybe I'll never write a novel again. Maybe I will, uh, but it's okay either way. That's all I can pretty much ask for is just the kind of peace and relief of letting go of that obligation. I feel more excited about the things that I want to make and the things that I am working on right now than I have in years. It's wild. <laughs> I actually have spent the last few days in like hyper focus just like obsessing about something that I'm working on which is really nice because it feels it just feels like more aligned with like the truth of where I'm at in my life right now. Okay that's it. That's my story. It's voiceover Rachel here to wrap up the video, to give you those uh, of the moment notices that may be relevant to your life. Um, yeah. Oh my god, I'm so fucking glad this video was done. <laughs> um, it was a big undertaking, um, as you may or may not have been able to tell. And uh, it actually had a lot more to it, but I had to break that into another video. So I just feel like I've been working on this since the dawn of time and I'm really glad that it's finally out. Um, so if, if you resonated with any of it or you found any of it interesting, please obviously let me know in a comment um, because they feed me and I need to consume them daily. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, here are a couple of things that you might want to know about. First of all, um, enrolment season for my programs is coming up in late April 2022 as I'm recording this. Um, holy shit, it's 2022. <laughs> um, so that means that I will be opening the Story Magic Academy which only opens twice a year and that is my paid program about designing strong... Str oh, I put too many ST sounds in this. Designing strong structures for stories. Basically designing plots. Um, 
So if you're interested in that, um, you're going to want to listen to the rest of this. Um, and I'm also going to be opening up my free workshop, um, which is the Story Toolkit workshop. And that teaches you how to keep your writing projects organized using four simple tools. That's all coming up late April. Um, the workshop offers a huge amount of actionable techniques just in itself for free. So regardless of whether or not you're interested in the academy, definitely come along and make the most of that if that is of use to you. Um, and of course, if you are on the fence about joining the academy, that's a really good way to get a feel for my teaching style and see if you might be interested. Um, but you'll get something out of it either way. So make the most of that. Make sure that you sign up for that at my site. I believe the link is rachelstephen.com slash toolkit, but I will put it on the screen just in case. Um, so yeah, that's the update when it comes to the Academy and the Story Toolkit Workshop. The other thing that I want to let you know is that I am, I've been thinking a lot about making some big shifts to how I communicate online. Um, because I'm thinking about leaving social media altogether, to be honest. Um, something I've been mulling over for a while. Um, that's not going to be immediate, but if you do enjoy my contributions on social media, they might be ending. So I'm going to direct you to where you can go instead. Um, I also, like here on YouTube, I upload at least once a month, um, but I don't have set times. So if you like my videos, and you want to know when I actually have one out. Of course, there's all the usual things. You can subscribe and have notifications and all of that. Um, but I highly recommend that you join my email newsletter because that is where I share like personal updates, um, tools, resources, um, just the same kind of stuff that I would really share on social media. Um, but that's where it's going to be basically from now on. So if you want to know when I have new videos or new work for you, both free or paid, uh, that is where you want to be. You're going to want to sign up for my newsletter. And I should really have looked up the link for that. Um, you can do it on my website, rachelstephen.com. Go there and uh, sign up for emails. Okay, I think that's about it. Well, I hope things are all right with you. And however they are, I hope that you're taking care of yourself. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> why did I? Okay, <laughs> let's try that again.